Spurge here, and in this video, we are gonna break down the all new Shoei X15 helmet. Now I say all new, this is a helmet that's been out in Europe for probably about six months now. And if you watched MotoGP, you've probably seen uh, Mark Marquez wearing this for at least a year. Um, but there's been a lot of hype around this helmet. It is finally here in the United States. So really what we're seeing is the top of the line race helmet from Shoei. There is gonna be a price increase here. We're looking at around the $900 price point for solid colors. I do have the outgoing X14. We're gonna put them side by side in this video. We're gonna talk about the key differences. But I would say right up front, the too long didn't read of this. If you wanna know nothing more than the key facts, it is getting a redesigned venting system. It is getting improved aerodynamics. It is getting a better face shield with a completely different cutout for better visibility in a full tuck race position. And it's getting a redesigned interior. So those are the main changes here. The other piece that we'll talk about is that this is now in, in the research that we've done, the only street helmet at the time of recording this that is carrying a DOT ECE and Snell safety rating in the United States market. So that in itself is a pretty big note to hit right up front. We will now dive in to the meat and potatoes of this particular helmet. Again, top of the food chain from Shoei, it is gonna utilize their AIM Plus shell that is a fiber composite shell, four different shell sizes. Um, the smallest of which is the extra small to small. You then get into a medium, which gets its own shell, large gets its own shell, and then extra large and 2XL share a shell size. DOT, ECE, 2206, and uh, Snell safety rated, like we mentioned earlier, five intake vents, five passive exhaust vents. The vents have been redesigned. Three pounds, 10 ounces in a medium, so two ounces heavier than the X14 in a medium that we threw on the scale side by side, and it retains its intermediate oval, so a little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrower on the side of the head. Should work perfectly for the majority of riders in the American market. If you're not sure about sizing up a helmet, make sure to check out our how to size and buy a motorcycle helmet guide, where we talk and explain all about internal fitments and how that is different than just looking at a generic large or extra large size. Um, so that is all of the big facts right up front. Now let's dive into some of the nitty gritty details. And to do that, I'm gonna pull up a outgoing X14. Now, if you're looking at these helmets and they might have some bug spotters still on, we've been riding in these now for a couple weeks and, and really trying to compare them in a side-by-side -side fashion. Uh, let's start with the overall aerodynamics of this. So if you're looking at the two helmets side-by-side, the new helmet is more aerodynamic. Now, according to Shoei stats, they're able to reduce lift by about 1%. They were able to reduce overall drag by about 6%. Probably something the average rider is not gonna notice. Maybe you would notice that on the racetrack, the helmet's not gonna feel like it's pulling up as much, or you might not get as much wind noise because of that reduced drag. But what you will notice is the improved ventilation on this. So the vents have changed, um, you lose, the brow vents, which were a little bit hard to actuate. You had one vent up top. You now have five intake vents actuated by, you know, you got three sliders up top, and then you've got a redesigned chin vent on this. The other thing to note here is that where the hydration tube, which is sold separately if you wanna use this with a hydration tube, where that placement is also acts as a big air vent on the inside of this. So you've got two vents that have been redesigned um, down at the chin bar on this. So again, with the front vents completely redesigned. Also, the rear vents have been redesigned. And on the old one, um, you're gonna notice that with this one, they were all passive as well, but they now have been kind of shifted and, and re-rotated roughly around 90 degrees. And the idea here is that you get less turbulence with the airflow actually passing through the helmet. So if you are riding in the summer months and you have those vents open in the front, the airflow is a bit smoother as it passes through the helmet. You can see the overall channels up on top and those ridges have been redesigned as well in the, uh, the scheme. The spoiler has been redesigned. So better airflow as it pushes through from the front to the back with the vents on this. We'll take a look at the inside channels in just a moment because the interior is different as well. The other notable change here is the face shield. If you're looking at these side by side, um, the face shields might look similar, 
but they are not. Um, you still have the little turbulators over on the side, but it is a much larger face shield because Shoei's actually increased the field of view by about five millimeters up at the top. So if you are in more of that full tuck position, you don't get the helmet kind of cutting off your field of view at the top of this. Um, the other note is that there's actually more room over towards the side of the head, and then it gets a completely redesigned pin lock system. So you actually have 10% more field of view with the pin lock insert, and we have the pin lock insert in this particular X15. Uh, we've been using it with the pin lock. The only, uh, the only note that I will also throw out here too is that it does feel a bit more rigid in this design. Um, even just using these side by side, this old one felt a bit more flexible. The new one definitely feels a bit more substantial in its design. If you saw me just open these, that's the, uh, that's the other notable change. There was this a bit of an awkward locking system on the previous version. The new one locks over and then opens up and then it's still locked in there. You can't just grab this and push it open. So it's almost like a dual safety system for those of you using this on the racetrack. Um, and there's actually a third mechanism that we'll talk about in a second to make sure that this face shield stays intact in the event of a crash um, or while you're just riding on the racetrack. So lock there is lock number one. Um, you have a button that you have to push and then that helps you to open this up. You can kind of leave it there if you want just a little bit of ventilation open up all the way. You'll notice on each of the side pods, and the side pods have been completely redesigned as well, you now can lock this. So that's in the open position. You can lock it so that you can't open the, uh, or you can't remove the face shield rather. So that is a new design there. And really the idea there is that in a crash, if for whatever reason the first two locks fail, um, you don't have to worry about the, the face shield accidentally coming undone and, and, and ripping away and, and, and causing you know extra problems for you there. So completely redesigned side pods to work with the redesigned face shield in general. So that was the other main change, really solid upgrades over the previous version of what you saw with the face shield on this particular helmet. And then when we're thinking about, okay, so we've hit on <clears throat> venting, we've hit on aerodynamics, we've hit on the face shield. We've talked about how that's gonna influence all the riding. Um, really what I wanna get into now is I wanna take a look at the interior because the interior on this is the other main significant change. To do that, I'm, I'm not gonna rip out the interior on this one because that's just frankly uh, a bit much. I'm gonna set this one aside and I'm gonna get my little donut up here and we will take a look at the inside of the new X15. So let's go ahead and open this up. Taking a look at the cheek pads on this, isn't the real story that I wanna talk about. Um, full wraparound cheek pads, high comfort interior, very high quality in its design. Um, you can see that the cheek pads are, are contoured. Um, they're removable, you can get different sizes. Nothing new, nothing out of the ordinary there. You do have speaker cutouts. Uh, if you wanna use a comm system with this, one of the things that I'll note is they are, uh, I would say, deep enough that they should be able to handle some of the, the new speakers that are coming. One of the critiques we've had with some helmet manufacturers is that the, the cutouts aren't deep enough because some of the new speakers are getting rather thick as they go for a more of a high fidelity experience. I think the cutouts in this do a really good job of being able to accept a, a comm system. Now, chances are you're not using a comm system if you're using this as your track only helmet, um, but just a note there. So pulling this out, and we'll take a look at the, uh, actually, let me, let me show you this first, and then we'll talk about the, the actual liner itself. So you can see really deep channel cutouts in that EPS. So all that airflow, the vents we were talking about from the outside perspective, you can see those deep channeled cutouts in the EPS liner on this to really allow the air to push through from, a, from the front to the back, making sure that you stay nice and cool in those warmer months of the year. Ventilation works really well. And then again, those really deep channeled cutouts help to cut down any of the resistance as the air passes, passes through the helmet and then works its way down to the exhaust fence on this lid. So the, the story that I wanna talk about from the interior though is all of these little micro adjustments you can make. So you've got these little, what looks to be like those emergency band-aids when somebody you know, gets a cut out in the field and you gotta stitch it together. You've got these little adjusters and it's just a simple Velcro system, but you can fine tune the fitment of how tight or how loose you want the, the top liner to sit. Now, in addition to these little micro adjustments that you can see, um, Pat McHugh, our, our product uh, manager, was actually riding in this particular helmet. He's kind of tightened it up a little bit on the back. In addition to that, 
if you look at the foam on the inside, and this is what's new over the previous version, you can actually make these micro adjustments with the foam. So if I undo that little Velcro piece there, you'll notice the foam on the inside is actually two separate pieces that's stuck together. And you can actually separate this. So if it's just a little bit too snug for you, you can pull that top layer of foam off. If it is a little bit too loose, you can, uh, you can leave that layer of foam on there or you can add it back on. Maybe the, the base foam starts to break in. So really fine tuning the adjustment on the inside liner on this. The previous version did have all those little micro Velcro adjusters, but now they're adding it one step further and you can actually fine tune the foam on the sides and the front of the helmet as well. So you can really make sure that your race helmet is fitting as tight as comfortably possible without causing discomfort um, to reduce any erroneous movement out there on the race track. So key upgrades from Shoei, minor price increase, you know, the, the price increase is right around the $100 mark uh, from what we've seen from the previous version. When you factor in the outgoing version hasn't been updated since 2016, you know, getting these updates and really the price reflects, if nothing else, uh, just some of the inflation that we've seen from a, from a cost perspective, but you're looking at around the $900 price point for solid colors. And considering the changes you're getting here, this is gonna be um, a real contender with some of those other high level track helmets that you're gonna see out there at this similar price point. Again, the only real critique that I have for Shoei is that it would have been nice to see a dark smoke shield included in the box for that particular price. But there's a lot of folks out there that have been excited for this to come. There's a lot of X14 users that have been champing at the bit for this to hit showroom shelves. And we finally have this helmet in America. For those of you that want more information, you wanna hear what other riders of X14s or, or new X15s have to say, you can click the info button on your desktop or mobile device. You can read other rider reviews from folks that are out there using this helmet on a daily basis or if you're still not sure as to which helmet is right for you and your style of riding, you can always reach out to one of our customer service reps. You can give them a call, you can shoot them an email, and they can help you find the right helmet to match with your riding style as well as your budget. I wanna thank you for joining us for this first look at the new Shoei X15 helmet. I'm Spurge, enjoy the ride.